So if we go ahead and look in here at our owner's manual, um, it's got a little chart here for all your readings with resistance. It's in K ohms over here. You can see, um, looks like something you just probe with a multimeter, except up here, you might skim this over. It says, use only hand tester, blah, 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 Kawasaki tester, must need to deal with tester, blah, 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 whatever. Stupid crap, you might just look over and be like, whatever, I'll just use my own multimeter, which is exactly what I did. Um, and I just obviously got the resistance, just like it's saying, it's got the positive lead up there, negative lead down there, whatever, easy, simple, that's what I thought. This is my readings um, from using, I've just got a regular LED multimeter I've been using forever, working on cars and bikes, whatever. These are the readings, everything's highlighted is bad, way out of spec. You can see we're reading mega ohms here um, and a lot of mega ohms. We've got opens when there shouldn't be opens. Things are a mess, threw me to a spin, making me think, I needed a module, needed a new one of these guys. So of course I bought another one and I started probing it. Um, same readings, almost exact same readings, just a little variance, um, which obviously if you're, you're testing anything, you know anything about fixing things. If you got two of the wrong part, a lot of the times it is the right part and it's working fine and you're just being an idiot. So I went ahead and scoured some more, whatever. Um, I'm trying to keep this short so I don't bore you guys. Obviously the people looking at this are just wanting to know how to fix it. Um, what you gotta do, get yourself a analog multimeter. This is cheap on Amazon, I got like 30 bucks. Um, I got this because it looks exactly like that Kawasaki tester that you're not gonna find anymore. It's like $300, I found one for, you're not gonna buy it. Just get $30 analog multimeter. Um, yeah, I went ahead, probed everything like you would with this multimeter, got much better readings, um, no longer had opens when there's not, right? It's reading opens up here, not open down here. So, uh, yeah, much better ballpark of readings. Obviously you can see some highlighted stuff that were out of spec, um, which is kind of funky. I just, I expect that it's just this multimeter. It's not the same as a dealer tester. That's where I'm going to put it as. There's no other way. There's nothing else you can do, right? I mean, you're not going to be able to get that new tester. From what I found, this is the best way to test it. I noticed that even though these readings are off, um, you can see here that if it can focus, row 10, we got 4K ohms, right? Row 9, we got 0.15. In the chart calls for 1.4 to 5.5 on the 9 and 5 to 20 on the 10 so obviously there's a big difference between 9 and 10 over here we got a big difference between 9 and 10 so and it's about the same ratio right 0.15 to 4k ohms about the same ballpark I think whatever so I think that this module is fine. My problem is elsewhere getting spark. Uh, and yeah, I think this test is going to get you to where you need to go, at least give you a good idea of whether your module is good or not. If your module is bad, more than likely it's going to have way over the top resistance. You're going to have an open somewhere. It's, it's going to be a mess. With this being showing a pattern and everything pretty much being in spec, I'm gonna say this is a good module. Um, yeah, so any of you guys, hope this helps you with finding your spar, getting this module tested. There's not much information out there, so good luck. Um, I'll catch you guys in the next video.